What's up guys, it's Fro with another video here today on how TBC is one month in. To no one's surprise, all phase 1 content was cleared in the first week. I managed to clear all but Nightbane in my first month of TBC, pugging the whole time. I'm not super focused on the endgame content right now, as many of you guys know, but lots of players are focusing on the endgame content right now, and the endgame is heroics. I myself have done zero heroics, but I have many friends who are farming badges. The LFG tank problem is even worse in heroics, and it is commonplace for tanks to charge tanking fees for heroics. I can't really blame them, I watched a recent video highlighting the tanking problem in TBC, and it's quite a good watch. The key points where tanking is the most responsible role, and usually is the least fun. A couple players tank out of necessity and many would rather not have the responsibility of tanking at all. I made a video a little over a month ago saying we needed hundreds of raid leaders for this expansion, and in a way we still do. But what I didn't realize was any class can raid lead. Only a couple of classes can tank. There is a tank shortage no matter where you look, and I'm not sure if this problem will get better. Over the past month, I've leveled up 570s. In the first two weeks, it was really easy to find dungeon groups. In fact, in the first week, groups were scheduled and repeated like work shifts. I remember waking up at 6am to level. I have needed to wake up at 6am to keep up with the leveling pace of attuning one tune to Karazhan each week. But I have started staying up later and later. It's just a little easier to find late night groups. There really was a wave of leveling. I've done Ramparts, Blood Furnace, Slate Pens, Underbog, Mana Tombs, Akana Crypt, Set the Call, Shadow Labyrinth so many times. The most popular instance the first week was Blood Furnace, second week was Slate Pens, third week was Set the Calls, fourth week was Shadow Labyrinth or Shattered Halls, fifth week, this week, I've started to see a rise again in Ramparts. I can't say there is one most popular dungeon at this point but it was indeed fascinating leveling up several times this past month and feeling an upward trend. Outside of leveling, dungeoning, and raiding is of course PvP and farming. I myself have had no time to do these activities, but it's of course a fantastic time to do these. This past weekend was the Horde vs Horde Battleground testing, which all of my friends dearly enjoyed. Farming honor and marks, much like badges, can be a very gradual grind. Many new players, or even old players with new mains, are catching up with veterans of Vanilla Classic. Arena Season 1 began a week or so ago and we have players testing out the waters with friends and pugs alike in the arena. Players are always busy and active in this phase, farming PvE or PvP objectives. The atmosphere of town is unsettled with a few players focusing on professions. With the advent of summoning stones and the number of activities to do, it's hard for myself to stay in town and I know many others feel the same way. Even a split between Orgrimmar and Shatrath feels a bit dislocated with no auction house in Shatrath and alts being able to instant mail. Instant alt mail is by far one of my favorite features of TBC, but it is also one that reduces the requirement of staying in town. I'm interested to see if town will become more stable in the future or if the in and out rotating door of town will continue. In the next month I'll continue leveling up tunes and I'll begin hosting 25 man pugs. Players have begun leveling up ults slowly and main characters are starting to settle down in their guilds. There's very few layers if any left and the popularity of the game has stabilized. I'm interested in hosting player events in the future but for now Let's all blossom in the phase one. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.